Well, good morning, everyone in Thailand. This is Jerry Hanley out at the California State University Center. Uh, and just want to say it's a great honor to present once again at the International E-Learning Conference. And this is 2020 too. And, um, and it's also, I just want to express my great appreciation and thanks for the wonderful colleagues that you have at the Thai Cyber University. Um, I've been uh, very grateful for the many years of collaboration and friendship that we've shared. So um, again, thanks again for having me here and I wish I could be there in person, um, but thank goodness technology enables us to be together virtually. And what I'd again like to talk about today is opening learning for all learners. And this is when we're pushing into the areas of workforce development, into manufacturing, in healthcare, in agriculture, in building maintenance, in construction, many of the areas where people gain wonderful employment that they can have sustainable income for their families and their well-being? And how do we really do this with a competency-based education approach and the role that MOOCs can play in opening learning for all learners? Now, I always begin many of my presentations with this statement about talent is equally distributed across the world, but opportunity is not. And the reason for this is that it begins to recognize the critical role that education plays because it can be one of the most powerful social and economic change agents that can provide the opportunities for people to benefit from their talents, that education enables people to grow their talents, to strengthen their talents, and to apply their talents to the betterment of their lives and the lives of their families. And when we're looking at opening learning for all, we're gonna emphasize in this presentation about how you can open learning with open educational resources, or OER, free educational access to the content of, for learning. And then we're also gonna talk about open educational practices, the know-how of learning and the know-how of the skills that I need to perform in jobs or in the workplace. And finally, also about open educational services, the technology that can enable people to have access to these resources and to apply their learning. And you can think about MOOCs as being that open educational service that allows all to learn. And through these open strategies, we can provide the educational opportunities for more people. Now, all this openness can get kind of confusing. What's the difference between resources and practices and services? So I'm gonna begin with a little metaphor about education and cooking, right? And because we all do cooking and we also begin with our ingredients and some of them we might grow in our backyard like the carrots and some of the stuff we use that other people produce, right? So when we think about ingredients in cooking, well, in open education, you can think about these ingredients are the open educational resources, the elements of the content that I bring together to really fuel education. Now, ingredients is not all you need to cook. You have to have the recipes, what someone has taught you or what you look in a book, or online, and also the competencies, the skills for you to do these things, right? Now, within open education, these are called 
open educational practices. So the know-how of using these ingredients to produce a meal or knowing how I use educational content to deliver instruction. Now, I can have the recipes and I could have practiced it and I could have the ingredients, but without the kitchen, without the utensils, without the stove and the oven, I don't have a mechanism to really produce the meal. And this is where open educational services really brings the resources and the practices that allows you to implement your education effectively. So that's why, again, think about these three elements of resources, practices, and services really come together so you can deliver that quality educational experience for your students. All right, now with all these things, when we think about open educational resources, our resources, ingredients that we have, we have the e-textbooks, tutorials, presentations, simulations, the MOOCs themselves, and many more. Again, again in the recipes, think about how many times you've gone to YouTube to try to learn how to fix your washing machine or plant a flower or figure out what might be going wrong because the flower is dying, right? All these videos are the know-how of how to do things. And we also are gi we're given guidelines, sharing e-portfolios about how you've taught something or templates and models. All these are guidelines about how to put into practice effective education. And then again, the open educational services, remember the kitchen. And this is where the tools and technology that we empower people, okay? So we're gonna bring, use these two, these uh, terms of resources, practices, and services throughout the talk here. And now what we're gonna begin to do is say, is that all we need just to have these resources, practices, and services? And what I'm gonna say is, nope, those are essential to help more people develop their talents, to have free access to the resources, the recipes, and the tools, but more is needed. And particularly when we talk about workforce development and when people, their, their lives are busy, they many times can be overwhelmed and they want to do more and progress more in their careers, that motivation becomes a very important element to apply and acquire new skills so they can advance in their career. So people need to be motivated. And what can be a, a wonderful way of motivating people to learn? And this is what I'm going to emphasize throughout this talk is around connecting the education that I'm going to get with the careers that I can achieve. Because it really is connecting that education to the, the careers that they can pursue, the economic benefits, the lifestyle benefits, the well-being that they can achieve in their careers is essential if more people are to see the value of that education, particularly in the area of workforce sectors. So then by connecting that education, that effort that they're gonna put into place to see the value that it can help them basically earn more money to support their families, improve their health and well-being, can be a very important motivation so that people can open their own time make time for their learning and open themselves to attending to the learning that they need to do. So this emphasis of connecting education and careers is gonna be very important. Now, when we look at this, especially in the area of workforce development, let me ask you this, this question. How many times were you asked when you're growing up, what do you wanna be when you grow up? 
all right? And I know I'm half a world away, but how many people want to raise your hand to say, yep, I've asked that, people have asked me that question. And now I'm going to say, and how many times did you say, I'm not sure yet, right? And this begins to give you an indication of where there is a huge need for us to begin to include in education, opening up knowledge about careers that people can have in their lives. Because if they're going to develop their talents, they then can apply their talents to careers. If education is going to develop that, those talents, how do we connect that education to careers? Now, where do you learn about all the possible careers in a reliable and valid way, right? It might be Uncle Michael has taught me this, or Aunt Tapani has taught me this, or Cousin Anuchai has taught me this, but are those really reliable ways to find out about what are the salaries that are there in different pr professions? Or is this profession going to grow in demand or is it declining? Because if you're going to invest in an education, how do you find out where do you want to invest your time that will lead to that outcome of a better life? So if we're going to motivate people by connecting their learning to their careers, we really need to improve the ways that people learn about the prospects of different careers. So we can have all the educational instruction process. And now how do we open up really the education about potential careers? And what I'm going to talk about next is about programs that we have been implementing in the US. I think that can be wonderful models of what you can do in Thailand as well. And the US Department of Labor has supported a program called Career One Stop. And it's a website that's open for everyone to go explore about careers in the US. Right? And this can be a model for what you can do in Thailand. And I'm going to show you some examples in Thailand too. All right. But first, I want to walk through an example here. So career one stop. And you can say, oh, I want to click on explore careers. And now what I'm showing you here, I know it's a little hard to see, but I'm going to do a little highlights. And I might say, you know what? I like to do things with my hands. And... Um, I might be interested in being a plumber. And so I can go to Career One Stop and it could give me an outlook of what's the likelihood of the job growth in plumbing. And it says it's an average and that growth is about a 5% growth in the number of people employed in plumbing. And then I could say, well, what about the income? Well, what are the typical wages? Well, the median income is about $58,000 and I go, wow, that's surprising. I didn't know that, okay? And then you can say, what's the education that I need? And it says here, about half the people have a high school diploma and another 25% have some degrees, some college degree uh, courses. So I could say, well, maybe this is about what the, the skills I have and now I can, how do I get the training that I need? to do that because it's an income that I might like, it looks pretty good, but let me see what else is out there. And I might say, hmm, let me look at, and I pull this one up, oh, what about a solar systems engineer? Boy, that sounds like it could be a good, exciting, but when I go to the data, it says this likelihood of job growth is only a 3% change over time. So it's below average. And then I might say, well, what, what's the income? Boy, the medium income is about $100,000. That's great. But now what's the education I have to go through? And so here, 
are bachelors and 25% are master's degrees. So you have to significant more investment in that education for the income, but the prospects is a little lower, right? So this is, you can see how data now having free access to people making choices about what careers that they wanna pursue to see what's the outcome that's possible. And now I might say, what about construction laborers? And I look at this one and this one says, it's a bright future because there's an 8% predicted increase in jobs in there, but the salaries are a bit lower. The medium income is 37,000. And when I look at what's the um, uh, education I need, again, 40% high school diploma, 32% are less than a high school diploma. So it might be, this might be an easier position to get into for a reasonable income and the future looks bright. So having open access to career information that you can bring into the instructional process can help people drive their motivation to do the learning because you are tying the education to their lives, to who they can become in their careers. So opening education is really just not about instructional course material, but about making opening it to the connections of their future in careers. Now, I did a little searching around um, in Thailand for how could I find things about um, salaries and job prospects in Thailand. And there are some commercial websites. So the first one is Salary Explorer. And there was another one called PayScale and there's a few other ones, but I'm gonna show you what they have in Salary Explorer. And in particular, so if you look on the left-hand side, they have all these different careers that are laid out in this little matrix there. And I'm gonna pick one because we ended up with construction and, and building and installation, right? We looked at career one stuff. And so, so you can begin to, this is available and open. It's got a lot of ads, so you have to deal with that. But this then, by providing access to career information, then you can connect, do I wanna learn the math that I need in construction? Do I wanna learn the team building skills that I need to work in construction? And when I can see what's the average salary, <coughs> excuse me, that I can get when I'm working in construction in Thailand? And what about the years of experience? As I gain more experience, what can I expect the salary increases to be? So you can begin with kind of the purpose of education, tying it to their job prospects and their lives in the long term. So again, the emphasis here is to open learning for all, to give people the motivation to pursue these opportunities that open educational resources, practices, and service can give you, tying it to careers is important. And you have your national statistics office, but when I looked into this about your job force, your labor force survey, it's basically, I can download an Excel spreadsheet but that's not really in a consumable presentation. And my suggestion here is that there can be excellent workforce development information available that you can create career planning OER from these resources. Because just as the Career One Stop website that I showed you had a lot of this information driven by the statistics at the national level, these can be available for you. And you may want to think about what's available. And also, I may not have found the stuff that's out there, right? But the, the whole point is, how do I tie not only instructional materials, but career materials into opening up people's opportunities? All right. So now when we think about, I can explore a, a, a career and choose one. Now, if I want to be a plumber or in construction or a solar system manager, 
what are the skills and competencies I need to get the job, right? And what I'm, we're gonna now move to is how education moving in workforce development has to really pursue a competency-based education strategy because the prospective employers want to know what you can do. What's the evidence that you can get the job done? And competency-based education is really essential to connect employability of that person with the education of the student, which often is has been disconnected. Um, I can do well, I sit in a class, I can fill out a multiple choice test and know about something, but can I do the job? Can I demonstrate the skills to get the job done? And competency-based education in the way it's designed helps you ensure that the skills are acquired that are essential for employment. Now, what makes a difference? And these are gonna be two elements that I'm gonna be emphasizing. And the first is that competency-based education begins with a defined model of the configuration of skills. And what I mean by that, it's a whole matrix, it's a whole connections and integration of different skills that have to be combined so you can complete a job. And we're, I'm gonna talk more about what all that means and, and what you have to do. And the other aspect about competency-based education is that your assessment methodology of the acquisition of those skills needs to be provided with authentic evidence, direct evidence that the person can get the job done, right? And so how do we begin to think about when I look at delivering education in a competency-based strategy, how do I have to kind of redesign the way I deliver education and assess student learning? Particularly when you're in the areas of workforce development. So what I'm showing you here, this is another um, resource within the Career One Stop funded by the US Department of Labor that shows you building blocks to think about what a competency model is. So in this diagram here, right, you can see it's a configuration and integration of skills. So at the bottom level, the foundation, they talk about personal effectiveness the interpersonal skills, about professionalism, about dependability and reliability, showing up uh, work on time, um, being flexible, right? So there are a set of skills at that foundational level. So no matter what the jobs are, those are essential that you need. And then on top of that, you talk about academic competencies, reading, writing, math, science and technology, critical thinking, basic computing skills. So these are the next level of skills. Again, I need the personal effectiveness and the academic competencies. And on top of that, the workplace competencies about how do I plan? How do I solve problems? How do I schedule and coordinate? All right, how do I sustain practices and be safe in the workplace? And finally, this is where we you know, get into industry-wide technical competencies and industry-specific ones. You can begin to see how if I'm going to develop a competency model to prepare someone in plumbing, in solar energy, or in construction, all these layers, this configuration has to be built into my educational plan into the competencies and the learning objectives that I have to have in my curriculum. So we look at this and then you can begin to say, well, how can I apply this to the specific competencies that I might wanna teach 
in my university. Well, Career One Stop actually provides you a tool, right? They provide you an open educational service where you can customize your own competency model. Now, as I said, is you need to create an account in there, but it's free, okay? And then you can say, if I want to work in the fabrication of fabrics in one of the regions within Thailand, or I want to work on, um, you know, uh, different type of agricultural strategies for another area, or I want to look at hospitality and management, you can then create your competency model to have your curriculum then support, okay? So building that competency model is critical as the first stage in competency-based education to look at what's the total configuration that you want. And, and know too that you don't have to get it all done in one course. You can really break out these competencies into certificate programs, credential programs, courses that you can build on top of one another so that when they graduate, all these competencies have been um, acquired in uh, your program. Now, one of the things about a competency model is that the competencies are for employment in industry whether it's self-employed industry or corporate industry, okay? Now, what should be important if you're going to build these competency models, you should also look at helping develop those models with industry partners. So that if I'm going to train plumbers, how could I get a plumbing company to look at those competencies and says, yep, those are the ones, those are the skills that we really need our employees to have. And that's what's going to enable them to have a good career, progress, grow salary, et cetera. Now, higher education can often have some challenges working with um, industry partners and there are some guidelines or practices that Skills Commons has put together, and again, providing open educational practices about how to pave partnership pathways. So here's a free website that walks you through step-by-step -step a model about how you can develop pathways with your partners in industry. And we also have other resources about how to engage employers in partnership processes. Because again, that's some areas that higher education can be strengthened. And if you want to connect education to employability in careers, Think about how your program can look at the practices of engaging employers. So again, I hope we now thinking about open education, the curriculum, connecting it to careers, and now how do I build the competency models for employment? Now I have to partner with industry partners. And again, how do you think about all these things? Well, Skills Commons is a library of all these resources. And I'm just showing you snapshots, snapshots of the resources that we have there. All right, now, now that imagine that you have your competency model, you're building your curriculum, and now you have to figure out how do I create authentic assessments? And here, one of the recommendations that I'd have here is for you is demonstrating skills in apprenticeship programs can be a wonderful way of getting that authentic assessment in it. And you can have an online education and MOOCs in a whole variety of ways, but then how do you get the students 
to, in a sense, be in the work-based learning environment to demonstrate their skills. So thinking about evaluating the acquisition of these competencies can be managed within apprenticeship programs. And again, this is going to be tied back to something I just talked about with partnerships with industry that you can help them begin to bring in people to learn the skills in the environment in which they have to succeed. And then you can evaluate how they're learning their skills in an authentic environment. Now, the next part that I'm gonna say here is apprenticeship programs really take work to figure out how to design them properly. You just don't say, okay, good luck, show up at work. So how do you design an apprenticeship program that blends what you're doing in the institution with what you're doing in the workplace and designing that apprenticeship process and guess where you can have those open educational practices, guess what Skills Commons has organized the resources and the practice so you can design successful apprenticeship programs and therefore enable apprentices to demonstrate their competencies in authentic manners. So now I'm just gonna present a few snapshots. So at on Skills Commons, and it's right there where it says support.skillscommons.org, showcases there. We have a whole set of showcases. One of them is on apprenticeships. And it begins with this page of saying, you know, how can you use Skills Commons for work-based um, learning and apprenticeships? And then we can say, here are exemplary projects, how to do apprenticeships in healthcare in IT, in manufacturing, in finance. And honestly, folks, there's great practices in healthcare that can apply in almost any industry. So you can then go to click on that, for example, the Healthcare Montana, and we give you more information. Here's a little description of what it does. Here's a, really an interview with the person to describe how powerful that apprenticeship program works. And we have an apprentice implementation toolkit. All the free educational open resources. I've just clicked on another page within Skills Commons that gives you things like organizational structure or the employer apprenticeship handout document. All these are examples that you have free and immediate access. And as an open educational resource, you can revise it, remix it, reuse it, retain it, and redistribute it for your purposes. And once you're thinking about how you design the toolkit, then Skills Commons even then provides the instructional materials that you can bring into your apprenticeship program about lab safety, you know, about evaluating and coding management, all these type of things that are available, soft skills training, okay? So opening education in workforce development and applying competency-based education strategies can be enabled by what we have in Skills Commons as well. And just to remind you all, you can find it at www.skillscommons.org. And just so you know, you will then be able to lay, le leverage a $1.9 billion investment. And I have no idea how many bots that is, but it's a whole lot of bots. And they invested in that for building this collection of over 60,000 open educational resources in all these industry sectors. And we have over 700 open course materials that you can download, reuse your numerics and integrate into your MOOCs across a variety of topic areas. And this is what the website looks like, just so you have a little peek at it, all right? 
And we created this visualization of what Skills Commons is. And as you can see here, the colors like the blue on the top right, that's the whole area of manufacturing. Red is healthcare, then you have IT, you have construction, you have uh, professional services, agriculture, mining, you have a whole variety of things, okay? Now, I couldn't do a presentation without talking about Merlot. For many of you know, I've been the executive director of that for many years. And so Merlot also has workforce development materials. And as you can see on the bottom left, we're, we're just about hitting 100,000 free and open materials for you to use. And here I put in workforce development. And so in the Merlot collection, these are all the topic areas. We have um, entertainment, fire safety, hospitality, manufacturing, transportation, right? And here's one about emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases, something that might be of useful for us all. Now, just to remind you too, Merlot not only searches its library, but we search over 70 other open libraries. And here I typed in nursing. And, and you can see one of the things we have over the 70 libraries and we have Thai MOOCs in the Merlot library. And if you clicked on Thai MOOCs, then we pull up all the Thai MOOC in nursing. And if you want to click on that, bingo, here you are, your Thai, your, your Thai MOOC in nursing course. So providing easy access to the workforce development materials is available for you, free and open. The practices about apprenticeship programs so you can have authentic ass assessment, free and open. The competency models and the tools to create it are at Career One Stop, free and open, and all the instructional materials available in Skills Commons for you. So when you really begin to now, we're gonna tie this into the Thai MOOCs, is that the Thai MOOCs can bring all these building blocks into an organization that can provide free and open curriculum and instructional guidance for employers, employees and prospective employees that they can use as part of their work-based learning programs. Free access to the soft skills or workplace safety um, or teamwork, all can be used in the workplace, not just in the classroom. And the Thai Cyber University can play a critical role in this process because they have the expertise to build the competency models, the educational strategy and theory about building the layers of the foundation of really the personal effectiveness. And then you have the academic skills and then the work-based learning skills and then the specific industry skills to build those competency models and then have the instructional design expertise to organize the scope and sequence for an effective learning experience. So the Thai Cyber University brings tremendous value in moving a competency-based education for workforce development. Now, this is the thing I also wanna emphasize, building partnerships with your industry sector is gonna be essential to validate those competency models and to provide the work-based learning, the apprenticeships in their environments. So you can then have authentic assessment while they're in the context of the MOOC, they're actually learning in the workplace and demonstrating their skills and showing what they've acquired. And just wanna say, hopefully you've seen uh, from the snapshots that we've created throughout the presentation that Skills Commons and Merlot can support TCU and your industry partners 
with your open educational resources, practices, and services to help you design and deploy your strategies for competency-based education. And importantly, the goal is accelerate the progress of Thailand's workforce development initiatives. We are here to, as many people have heard me say, give a gift and not a burden and to enable you to be successful in achieving your goals. So all these things, I know I've covered a lot of materials and many different topics, just to emphasize opening learning for all is enabled by open education. That connecting careers to education is gonna be essential to help motivate people to pursue learning opportunities. And I wanna emphasize and need to include career exploration in your MOOCs. Competency-based education, really important for workforce development and defining those models and the assessments and partnering with industry is going to be essential. And finally, you don't have to do it without support. We are here in Merlot and Skills Commons. The tools that we can make available that are through the Department of Labor, as well as Merlot and Skills Commons to help you opening learning for all by bringing open resources, practices, and services to empower your programs. And with that, I just wanna thank you once again for providing me the opportunity and the honor to be part of your community once again and share with you some of the experience and expertise that comes from the years I've spent in open education. And, um, and I wish you all the best at your conference um, that, that you have. And, and I hope to be there, back there in the future. Um, and thanks again for allowing me to be here virtually. Bye-bye.